Hey guys, Paradox Seal here. Welcome back to a brand new video, everybody. Today we are going to be starting a brand new and improved updated series on Discord.py. Now you might be wondering, why am I bringing a whole new series on Discord.py? And the answer to that question is that the original Discord.py series is getting a little bit old now. It is uh, starting to become outdated in uh, certain aspects, and I've noticed a lot more people have recently been having trouble following that series. And also, Discord has been updated quite a bit since then, and so has the Discord.py library. So I figured the best thing to do was start fresh on a brand new Discord.py series. So you might be wondering now, what is this series going to bring that the original Discord.py series didn't bring? And the answer to that is, well, not much. Uh, basically, the only main difference between this series and the original one that starred over a year ago is that uh, this new series will cover a few more uh, newly added uh, features to the Discord.py library and Discord itself. And uh, we're going to go over some more efficient ways and uh, just uh, some ways that are better in practice uh, and going around developing your own Discord bots. So uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, for today's episode, uh, we're just going to worry about getting our Discord bot online. We won't uh, worry about making any commands just yet. That will actually be the next episode, so stay tuned for that. But the first thing we're going to do is going to our web browser and then going to this URL right here, discord.com slash developer slash applications. And uh, once you type that in or click the link in the description, it should take you to a page that looks just like this. Uh, once you get here, you want to click on the blue new application icon that is right there at the top right. Click it and then we're going to name our application. And uh, for YouTube purposes, I'm just going to stick with YT bot. And then we just got to agree to the terms of service and developer policy. And then after that, we now have our Discord bot created. So just a couple things here that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is the bot's user ID, or uh, known as the application ID on Discord's developer portal. Uh, we can add a profile picture to our Discord bot if we want. And uh, this is the description that we can uh, put in the About Me section of our Discord bot. And uh, this is just an uh, area where we can put some tags. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the tags actually do. Um, it doesn't really go in depth on what they're for. I don't think they're very necessary, but they're there if you figure out what you want to do with them. And uh, this is some stuff that's not really important. It just shows like how many servers it's in. And then uh, this is some um, uh, URL links that we can put in and um, privacy or privacy policy or uh, terms of service URLs for your bot if you want to add some specific uh, terms that a user would have to agree to. But uh, none of that's really important right now. Like I said, we're just going to worry about getting our bot online. So the next thing we're going to do is navigate to the left side of the screen here to where we see the bot uh, denoted by the uh, puzzle icon. So we're going to click on that. And uh, it takes us to this area right here. Now uh, we're going to scroll down to the bottom. And uh, we are going to make sure this one is turned on. And essentially what this does is it allows you to add uh, your bot to other servers or it allows uh, people to invite your bot to other servers. And uh, the reason why we're going to leave this on is because this series is going to be more geared towards public bots. However, if your bot is just going to be for your own personal Discord community or for your friends to use, this can be check marked off. It essentially only allows you to invite the bot servers and nobody else can. But like I said, we're going to leave that on for the sake of this series. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to turn all of these on right here. Uh, basically, these are what are known as intents. And uh, these are just going to make sure that your bot doesn't run into any problems when trying to... Um, mess with any user info or any guild or server info. Uh, it just basically makes sure that this bot can retrieve that information uh, smoothly and not run into any problems there. Uh, mostly it deals with um, 
presence updates, uh, server members, and just content sent within that server. Uh, this is bot permissions. Uh, we won't go into depth with these just yet, but we will later in the video. But for now, we want to grab our bot's token. And uh, to do that, we just got to click on reset token. Yes, do it. And then if you have uh, two authentication, you have to punch in your six digit authentication code. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut to where I get the token. Uh, just because I don't want to share my code, but uh, I'll be back with you guys in just a second. All right, so I just punched in my code and now it has revealed my bot's token. Now, something very important about this token is you do not want to share it with anyone who you do not trust. Uh, only share this token with yourself and your team who is developing the bot with you. Um, essentially the reason why we want to keep this private is because anyone who gets a hold to this token essentially has full control over your Discord bots. They can inject their own code with using your Discord bots, and essentially it can cause some damage to some Discord servers, um, other, you know, sensitive things such as server members, uh, it can really... It, can, it just really won't let you have a good time. That's all I'm going to say. There's a lot that can go wrong if this code were to get leaked out to someone. And uh, you also don't want to forget this code. So it's good to copy it and store it somewhere safe. I'm going to put it in a little text document here. Uh, one I already created on my desktop. And I'm just going to paste it right here. Uh, this you'll see in just a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and save this and exit out. And I will come back to that uh, token later on. All right, so now we have our bot uh, fully set up uh, in the developer portal. Now we can actually get to scripting our bot. Now, uh, as the title suggests, we are going to be using Python to uh, script our Discord bots. Uh, if you have never programmed with Python before, I highly, highly recommend at least getting to learn the syntax of the language and just a couple uh, key functionalities of the programming language before actually attempting to make your own Discord bot. Uh, this is an intermediate Python tutorial, so it does require a little bit skill within the language to actually uh, get things done with your Discord bot. So uh, without further ado, just getting that disclaimer out of the way, we are going to go ahead and open up our command prompt by uh, hitting the Windows key and the R key, <laughs> typing in CMD and pressing OK. After that, we can go ahead and type in pip, install, discord, and that will be it. Uh, for me, it is saying requirement already satisfied. That is just because I have it installed. For you, it might take a couple of minutes. It'll just run through all the files and then install them into your libraries on your computer. And of course, you need to have Python installed to actually code your Discord bots. I <laughs> uh, did not think I'd have to say that, but I know one person's going to ask me. But hey, it's okay. We all start somewhere. But uh, anyways, after that, we can go ahead and close out of our command prompt, and then we can open up our personal IDE, or uh, code editor as some may call it. I personally like Visual Studio's code, <coughs> excuse me, may mainly just because it's easy to navigate, and it's just something I've been used to for a while now. You can use something like PyCharm. Um, Notepad++, Sublime, or Atom. Those are all great tools to use for Python scripting. I, I highly recommend Visual Studio's code if you're a beginner. But uh, anyways, once we open a Visual Studio's code, we want to exit out of the welcome screen here and then immediately navigate to Open Folder. After that, we can choose the folder that we want to uh, basically store our Discord bot's uh, files in. Now, I already made a, a folder for my Discord bot in my C drive or local drive. I just have it labeled as YT Discord bot. So I'm going to go ahead and add that now. And I meant to delete this earlier. But uh, once we have our file added, we're going to go ahead and create our Python file. Now, in case uh, you haven't coded in Python just yet, um, the uh, Python's file extension is just .py, so pretty simple. 
Uh, for our bot's main file, we're just going to call it main.py. Of course, you can call it bot.py or client.py, uh, whatever you prefer. But uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and start typing in import discord. And then from discord, import commands. And I actually meant discord.ext, so let me just fix that there. All right, there we go. And then we need to go ahead and create our uh, client object. Uh, I'm just going to call it bot, and it's going to be set equal to commands.bot with a capital B. And uh, inside here, uh, we are going to type in command underscore prefix is equal to, and then the prefix that you want your bot to use. This could be a slash, an explanation point, or a dot. I'm going to choose a dot just because I can click it easily. Uh, now, keep in mind, um, you can use slash commands in discord.py. We aren't going to get into it just yet. That will be in a future video. So if you prefer to have slash commands, don't worry. We will eventually cover that. But for now, we're going to keep it short and simple with command prefixes. Now, after that, we're going to add a comma and fill in our second parameter, which is going to be intense. Now, essentially, this just allows our bot to have full control over what it wants to do, uh, won't run into any issues, and that's actually why we wanted to make sure that all these were turned on inside our developer portal. All right, uh, we're going to set that equal to discord.intents with a capital I, dot all, and a set of parentheses after that because that is a method that we're trying to call. Uh, be sure that the I is capitalized and intense, but lowercase over here. Um, I've had some issues with some people who may have not noticed they were using a lowercase I and it was causing a lot of problems. So I believe it is something I wanted to uh, share with you in the video. But after that, uh, what we can go ahead and do is type in bot.run. And then inside here, we're going to paste our token. Now, if you remember, I put my token in this text file here. Again, don't want to share it with anybody else. And just like that, it's, since it's taking in a string, we're just going to paste it in just like that. And then we can go ahead and run. Now, uh, of course, I haven't invited the bot to my Discord server yet, but it is running. But I'm going to go ahead and kill the program because I need to actually invite my bot. And I will show you how to get your own uh, bot's uh, invite link. So I'm going to open up Discord real quick and just go to my uh, server here. Uh, this is just an old bot I was testing with. But uh, basically what we're going to do now is go back to our browser. And then uh, we are going to copy our application ID. Now, uh, on the internet, you can search up uh, bot invite link templates, and essentially it's just going to be a, um, a URL link with two spots you need to fill in, which is application ID and permissions integer. So right here, I'm going to paste in my application ID, and then for permissions integer, we need to scroll back down to the permissions uh, box here. And basically, the integer is going to be whatever pops out here, and it's going to be changing based on what permissions you want to use. So you just have to copy that uh, number whenever you are ready. Now, I personally use administrator just because it's easy to remember. It's just a number eight. And um, it just basically utilizes all of these here. So I'm going to uh, fill this in right here all right and now if i go ahead and copy and paste that into url as you can see i can now invite my own bot to my server authorize yes i am human and gotta fill the little captcha all right sweet I go ahead and yep my bot is in here and it's offline but if I go ahead and run my bot again as you can see it is online and working but um, we haven't we don't really know if it's running just yet so we want uh, the program to let us know when our bot is online 
Now, the way we can do that is uh, by having an on ready event uh, scripted in our file here. And to do that, we're just going to type in an at decorator here. And we're going to type in bot.event sync def on underscore ready. And then in here, we're just going to print bot ready like that. And now if I go ahead and run the code, as you can see, it will say bot ready at the bottom of our terminal. This just lets us know our bot is turned on and is working as it should. And um, another thing I wanted to show you before I end off the video here is uh, how to mask our uh, token. Now, since you don't want to share this token with anyone who is not on your development team, uh, what we can do is actually store our token in another file. That way you can safely copy and paste all your code to share it on GitHub or um, Pastebin or wherever you plan on sharing your code to. Uh, this just ensures that nobody can grab your token and then uh, hack your bot essentially. So what I like to do is I like to create a new file in the same directory as my main or bot.py file. And I'm just going to call it token.txt. And inside here, I'm going to paste the token in the first line. After that, what I can do is uh, type, a with, type in a with open block. So with open token.txt as file. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to type in token is equal to file.read. And after that, we can just paste in token right here. So essentially what this is going to do is it's going to open up this token.txt file and it's going to read the contents of that file, which in our case is just our bots token. Now, of course, you can add more stuff to this file later, like the invite link or a couple of important information. Uh, then we would use a method called read lines, but I'm not going to show you guys that just yet, just because it's not too important at the moment. Uh, this is just fine for now, but if I go ahead and run this code, as you can see, it should, yep, it should work just fine. And now our bot is yet again online. So, uh, that is it for today's episode. All we want to do is just make sure our bot is online and just get us our files set up, uh, for more scripting in the future. So uh, that is it for today. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like on it. Comment your favorite part. Tell me how your day is. Or if you want, you can even comment on what type of content you would prefer to see next time. Uh, stay tuned for next episode, which is going to be on writing commands for our Discord bots. And uh, again, thank you all for watching. You enjoy your day and don't forget to subscribe for future content. Bye-bye, guys.